Hi, Brent Tech here, where tech is made simple. So we have the latest optional bug fix C release update rolling out for Windows 11 23H2, which is KB5044380, which is, give or take, more or less the same update I posted on a couple of days ago when it was still in preview and has now made its way to the stable version. Now the update rolled out late yesterday in my region on the 22nd of October, and the update is optional. So you don't have to install the update because if you don't install the update now, it um, the, fi the fixes and improvements will be carried over into uh, the November Patch Tuesday um, update, which will roll out on the second Tuesday of next month. And if you do decide to install the update on version 23H2 of Windows 11, your OS build will be bumped up to 22631.4391. Now, just to focus on the highlights, um, we get a couple of new features rolling out using a gradual rollout. So you may see some of these, you may not. Um, I'm sure that by Patch Tuesday, if you don't see them now, you, sh you should start seeing some of these new features on a gradual rollout. But nonetheless, just to go through these uh, to keep you posted. Now, first of all, um, there's a new gamepad keyboard where the update starts the rollout of a new gamepad keyboard layout for the on-screen keyboard. And we have actually spoken about this on the channel in previous videos when it was still in preview, but just a quick recap. So with it, Microsoft says you can use your Xbox controller to move around the screen and type. And button accelerators are also available. And these include the X button for backspace and the Y button for the spacebar. And for better uh, movement patterns, the keyboard keys are aligned vertically. So that's a new gamepad keyboard, um, which starts the rollout of the keyboard that you can use with your Xbox controller. Then moving on to the next, I'm just going to mention this. There's a new feature for notifications where you can now stop the suggestions to turn off notifications from certain apps. Now, when you get a notification from an app, it will show up here to the bottom right of your screen. So what you would do to, to turn off notifications is you would select the ellipsis, which is also the three-dotted menu in the notification, and turn it off. And you can also go to settings, system notifications, and turn it off from there. So I think that's just a nice little small improvement, being able to get rid of those notifications directly from the actual little pop-out dialogue and menu. And then the start menu, um, all apps has now have been renamed to just all. And for some reason, Microsoft has is doing this across the board. So it's still on a gradual rollout. So you may see it, you may not, but all apps is now um, got a new name called all. And then narrator, which is an accessibility feature, as you may well know. So if we just head over to that quickly. Um, narrator is a screen reader that describes what's on your screen. There are two new features that have rolled out for Narrator. The first is this update adds a new Narrator shortcut. So you press the Narrator key plus Control plus X to copy what Narrator last spoke to the clipboard. And this uh, shortcut is useful when you want to quickly copy some content like codes or numbers for use. So that's the first feature. And then the next one, I'm also just going to mention, it will now auto-read the contents of an email message in the new Outlook. This is like the, uh, the previous behavior in Outlook Classic, says Microsoft. And I'm always in favor when uh, accessibility improvements are made in the browsers and the operating systems. So those are the new features on a gradual rollout. Now focusing on what's rolling out normally, according to Microsoft. There's a new improvement for the Copilot key settings. So for this, we're just going to head back to an image. And you can now configure the Copilot key on the keyboard. So on new devices, the key opens the Copilot app. So if you sign into your account using a Microsoft Enter ID, the key opens the M365 app. And you can make the key open a different app or open search to do this you go to settings personalization text input and if your your pc's keyboard does not have a copilot key changing the setting will do nothing so i think if you do have a copilot key um, being able to configure 
the Copilot key, I think, is a step in the right direction. Just giving you a little bit more choice, which I'm always, um, always in favor of and in favor for. And then just going to mention the next one, battery use. There's a fix. So the only new feature normally rolling out is the um, being able to configure the Copilot key. Then we get one, two, three, four important fixes and, and improvements that have rolled out. The first is um, they fixed battery use where a device uses too much battery power while the device is in modern standby. That has been fixed. There's a fix for Microsoft Teams. Apparently, there was an issue that stopped you from joining Teams meetings when you select an Outlook meeting reminder. Uh, there's a product activation phone numbers fix where apparently this adds new phone numbers for several regions. So that's a bit of an improvement. And then we've got a printer a fix for multifunction printer. And when you use a USB cable to connect to it, apparently it prints specific network command text when you do not want it to. So that's a little bit of a printer fix. So normal rollout, one new feature, four improvements and bug fixes. Now, because this is a non-security update, it does include quality improvements, seven more in total. I'm just going to mention four quickly to keep you guys posted. There's a VM switch fix. A VM switch triggered a stop error. That's a blue screen of death, which is important. So this occurred when you use load balancing and failover teaming with two virtual switches on a virtual machine. So any stop error, blue screen of death that gets fixed is an important fix. And then there's a fix for Windows Hello for business. Apparently, um, the pin reset didn't work when you select the I forgot my pin link on the credential screen. And second last one, there's a fix for WebView 2 apps. Apparently, they do not detect input from Xbox 360 and Bluetooth controllers. And there's a Bluetooth fix where an app stopped responding because of a memory leak in a device. So quite a lot going on in this update. So guys, that's more or less what's new in KB5044380 that rolled out yesterday on the 22nd for Windows 11 23H2. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.